Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the Wristwatch News Channel. I'm Nick, and today we're going to be reviewing the San Martin SN0122 GMT, a 39mm diver come GMT that uh, came about as a collaboration between Watch Dives and San Martin. I still don't know the link uh, that there is between San Martin and Watch Dives, why uh, Watch Dives seem to get all these co collabs. If anyone knows, could you let me know in the comments? Because uh, I'm really interested to know. Uh, when I bought the watch on AliExpress, I didn't realize it was a, another collab with uh, Watch Dives, as usually they tend to only be sold through the Watch Dives store that I've noticed. Uh, but then this wasn't from the San Martin official store. It was from one of the other sellers. So I'm not sure how that all works, to be honest. If you're new to the channel, we like to review watches, watch accessories, and watch-related content. If that's what you're looking for, well, you're in the right place. Uh, returning subscribers, well, let's just be honest, you complete me. The last watch I reviewed was also a San Martin, the uh, version 1 Aquaterra homage. And I've got another San Martin on order. But I'm thinking about cancelling it. It's the Year of the Dragon. I've just seen what it actually looks like. And I'm not sure, not sure. Seems I've been on a bit of a San Martin kick without even planning it. Um, so, well, let's have a look at this Tudor homage and see if there's a reason it didn't remain as a Watch Dives store exclusive. What do you get if you buy a San Martin SN0122 GMT from the Diver Watch Factory store on AliExpress, which is where I purchased mine? Well, you get the same old uh, Pelly type case, um, same old gubbins being the San Martin round instruction manual, a, uh, a round warranty card, which is um, signed and stamped, but not dated. Uh, I wouldn't think this would affect the Diver Watch Factory Store free year warranty that they state on their advert, uh, as of course the purchase was made on AliExpress and it's recorded there. So there shouldn't be an issue using the warranty without a date on the card, I wouldn't have thought, because it's all stamped and it's all recorded on AliExpress. You get that weird luggage tag. I don't know. Uh, here we have the spare links, as I've already sized the watch. And as you can see, we have three links taken out to fit my 6.75-inch wrist. And that's so that the on-the-fly adjustment clasp is set pretty much in the middle. Uh, the bracelet sizing tools from San Martin, which are always good quality, uh, always worthwhile these. Uh, the gubbins that the watch was wrapped in, and of course, the watch isn't here because I've been sizing it, but the watch itself. Here it is. And look at that. You can really see the loom uh, showing up by here. I mean, I'm in a very well-lit room, and uh, that loom is glowing. Yeah, look at that. Pretty good, huh? All right, so we're going to run through the stats now. So the model number of this watch is SN0122, the GMT model. Uh, the store states that the case size is 39 mil. I'm measuring at 39.2, so yeah, 39 mil. Uh, the store also states a thickness of 12.8, including the dome crystal, but I'm getting 13.7, so hmm, a bit off there. Uh, the crown measures 6.4 mil, and uh, lug to lug then is 46.7. Uh, the store states 47, so yeah, 47, that's fine. Uh, lug width is 20 mil with the bracelet tapering from 20 mil down to 16 mil at the clasp and the clasp measures 18.4 mil so it's basically 20 to 16 and then 18 at the clasp so the thickness is supposed to be 12.8 mil but i'm getting closer to 13.7 13.8 measuring from the top of the bezel rather than the crystal it's coming out as 11.4 so i'm not sure where that 12.8 is coming from uh, links are 2.9 mil thick, and the weight with all the links is around 152 grams. We've got a dome sapphire crystal with blue anti-reflective coating on the underside, and this watch is powered by the good old Seiko, well, good, good old new Seiko NH34, uh, which is a caller office type GMT. Uh, the difference being you can independently set a true GMT hand backwards and forwards, whereas this one only goes forwards. And we've got 316L stainless steel case and bracelet with a healthy stated water resistance of 300 meters. I don't usually start with the case, but the case and bracelet of the watch are primarily brushed for that tool watch aesthetic. There is a high polish chamfer running from lug to lug, crown guards and crown, which is superbly machined. 
The finish in on this case is top notch, and the crown, which is etched with the San Martin hexagonal logo, is just beautiful. It's so well machined, with a high polish between those grooves, giving it a like an iridescent effect. I chose the matte black dial with the red accents, and it's it's a good look. The stark white indexes and hands against the black, I think, is always a great contrast. And then we have a nice pop of color with the GMT hand being in red, and also the GMT lettering. The San Martin hexagonal logo is printed above the pinion. And then you have the three lines of text, GMT in red, automatic, 300 meters in white printed below the pinion. Applied square indexes filled with stark white BGW9 loom. Apart from the 3, 9, and 12, 3 and 9 being rectangles, and then the 12 hour marker being a triangle. Uh, something that's going to come up later in the good, the bad, and the ugly section is the lack of a minute track. Instead, we have a uh, rehout with the 24 hour marking, so the GMT hand. And then we've got a date window, uh, which is just a cutout date window at six with a ma matching black date disc. The bezel is a 120 click unidirectional uh, bezel with a matte ceramic insert. The markers are filled with BGW9 and it's very crisp. Uh, standard dive style markings for the um, Tudor FXD model. Uh, those kind of markings around the bezel with a triangle and circle loom pip. Uh, the bezel does have a very nice action and lines up with the 12, or should I say the 24 marker. And uh, the coin edge does provide some good grip to the bezel. Covering that black dial is a dome sapphire crystal with blue anti-reflective coating. Regulars of the channel will know I have a bit of a vendetta against blue AR. I just don't like it. I have to say, though, it's not been super noticeable on this crystal, um, but I'm not that happy with the crystal anyway, which I'll cover in the good, the bad, and the ugly section as well. The hands are Tudor Snowflake-style hands, matte black, paint at the center, and then a stark white again. Uh, the second hand's counterweight is black, and the GMT hand is, of course, red, with a diamond three-quarters away to the end. Snowflake hands are de decisive. Some people love them, some hate them. I've come to really like them. I used to think they looked a bit daft, to be honest, but they've grown on me over the years. So I mentioned earlier that the case and bracelet of this watch are primarily brushed. Uh, get that tool watch bab going on with your uh, diver. And um, it's a folding clasp then with the double pushers and the San Martin on the fly adjustable clasp, which again has the San Martin hexagon logo. Now, this is a great clasp. It's uh, really good for uh, adjusting on the go. I've a previous uh, iteration of this clasp I had on a different watch. I couldn't get it to fit properly, even with the uh, on the fly adjustment, whereas with this one I could. So I don't know why that is. It might be just a different size ahead of the watch, but uh, I could get a better fit. Case back, like with pretty much all San Martins now these days, it's just a plain screw down case back with no text and it's brushed. San Martin used to do that big old shark on the back, which I've got to admit I was never that fond of. But I also don't like just a plain case back either. Unless you're Rolex, I kind of just feel you're cheaping out a bit compared to the other brands who are making an effort. The SN0122 GMT comes in three fetching colorways. The black and red we have here, a blue and orange, and a green and orange. I think in retrospect, the blue is probably the best looking colorway for this style of watch. But I didn't want to buy another blue Tudor homage after the Octopus Kraken, so I went with the black. Uh, the watch is currently available for around $350 or £270, and that's from where I bought it, the Diver Watch Factory Store. Alright, onto the loom now. So the dial, hands, indexes, and bezel are all loomed on this uh, bad boy with plenty of BGW9. You get a lovely bright blue glow initially, which fades out slowly. Over the period of my test time, which is about 10 minutes, equal into about six to seven hours you and I time, all the loomed elements are still fully visible apart from the, uh, the smaller markers on the bezel. Okay, let's talk the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the good, the finishing on the case and the bracer, although simple, is very good. As I said earlier, those crown guards and the crown, well, I just think they're gorgeous. The on-the-fly adjustment clasp is great and works just like the clasp I had on Omega Seamaster a few years back. As a caveat, though, I have seen a few failed clasps on the forums where the pin in the mechanism has snapped. 
so they might not be a hundred percent there yet with the durability the dial indexes and hands are very nice with clean printing and of course the loom is very good the bad is it a diver is it a gmt being a watch enthusiast i suppose i like my watches to be one thing or the other these days be a gmt or be a diver when you try to amalgamate both, you don't seem to get the best of both worlds, you just get a mishmash. Like with this watch having a unidirectional bezel and no minute track. So you can't really use it as a proper GMT, and you can't use it as a proper diver. Uh, which is the reason I'm guessing it's not sold all that well and um, didn't remain a watch dives exclusive. The ugly, the crystal. Now don't get me wrong, it's a nice crystal. I just don't think it suits this watch. I think a flat crystal would have made more sense to bring the thickness down as well. And also the style of watch generally would suit a flat crystal more than a domed, I, I feel. It might be that the dome crystal is to accommodate the 300 meters of water resistance rather than the usual 200. But for me, it spoils the overall look of the watch. And it's not like this watch is a true diver either. So, you know, 200 would have been plenty. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me for another review. Uh, if you're in the market for a GMT diver, I probably suggest you go elsewhere, to be honest. Uh, there's better GMTs on AliExpress from other sellers. There's better GMTs from San Martin themselves. However, if you want an extremely well-made diver that has the functionality of a GMT, uh, while having the depth rating of a proper diver, this would be a good shout. For the money being paid, you won't get a better made option from Japanese or entry level Swiss, uh, unless you get really lucky on the used market. And then, like I said, San Martin have got better GMTs themselves. They've got the SN0109 G, the Black Bay Homage. There's the SN0054 G, the, uh, the Black Bay Pro. They're great watches and they're cheaper. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I did put, I've got the Year of the Dragon on order. I'm still thinking I might cancel it, to be honest. I just, I just, the, that picture on Facebook today has put me right off. Um, I do have the Boltney uh, Vacheron Constantin, 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 the VC Homage that I still haven't reviewed. Uh, a bit late in the game for that now, really, but. I, I'll probably still review it because it's a it's a really nice watch and it's worthy of the review. Um, I've also recently picked up a bronze number from Shoreham and a gorgeous Vera. Uh, two, well, Shoreham, a Welsh brand, and then Vera, a British brand. Uh, reviews of which will be coming soon. If you are going to pick up this uh, GMT San Martin, uh, I would appreciate if you use the affiliate link in the description. Uh, also, there'll be affiliate links for uh, other watches mentioned in the video and uh, accessories uh, that might be mentioned, or accessories I think you might be interested in. If you want to check out a different San Martin uh, GMT review, I did review the SN0109-G Black Bay Homage, which I also put head-to-head -head with an actual Tudor GMT. So that might be worth a watch. Uh, check it out. So cheers, guys. Thank you again for joining me for this one, and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Cheers.